All right. So maybe a little bit of roasting, a little bit. It's not going to be name calling, but where are the conservatives who truly believe in smaller government? Why do they say one thing and then vote for another? Why do they say they believe in smaller government and freedom and then vote for big government type? You know, that's inconsistency. You know, freedom is what matters. I thought conservatives believe in freedom. I thought liberals believe in talent. But the opposite I've seen is the liberals are the most intolerant of talent of both. You know, I've seen all different types of liberals attacking MAGA supporters. I would never attack somebody over a hat. I don't care what kind of hat they're wearing. I don't care what kind of hoodie they're wearing. I don't care what kind of shorts they're wearing. It's not okay to attack people even if they're wearing a MAGA hat. It's not okay. Stop it. It's unacceptable to assault people for a hat. Liberal, if you want to be taken more serious, stop assaulting people and stop hitting people for different views and different beliefs. If you want your party to continue to vanish and wonder why people are walking away, well, it's your own damn choices for doing so. Whoa. It's your own it's your own reasoning for attacking people. That is the reason why people are walking away from the liberal in the far left movement. You know. If liberals were tolerant, they wouldn't be attacking people. They wouldn't be calling people names. They wouldn't be saying racist stuff. They wouldn't say, they wouldn't same thing with conservatives. They would be advocating for smaller government. But where are the smaller government types? They are out there, but where are the consistent ones? I know there's consistent conservatives. I know there is, but where are they? That's what I want to know. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Justin? Where are the talent liberals? I'm talking about the true actual talent liberals. I know they're out there, but where are they? Not the Nancy Pelosi type, not the AOT type or the Bernie Sanders type, but true liberals who are tolerant of other views and other opinions. Where are the consistent ones like that that truly debate on issues rather than personality and party line? That is the type of people that interest me. You know, I'm in the ideas and concept and things like that. I can debate with the liberal all day as long as he doesn't call me a racist name or attack me. Same thing with a conservative. But every conservative I've talk to a liberal on the internet at least, not in the real world. They they say they believe in smaller government, but they vote for the exact opposite. Why is the exact opposite happening? That they're voting for bigger government instead of truly voting for people who truly advocate for a smaller quote unquote constitutional representative republic. Why won't they vote for those types? Said we get the Donald Trump type who said one thing and did another, the Obama type, the liberal door drooling over them, and the conservative whined and moaned, and then they got their guy in power, the conservative, and then anyone who attacked them, they whine and moan because somebody is not choosing team A or team B, they're choosing team no one. So where are the where are the consistent conservatives? Where are the consistent liberals? This isn't calling anyone in name. This is just trying to figure out exactly where are the consistent liberals and where are the consistent conservatives at. Both on the internet. In con in conservative part, party groups and pages. Um, I don't know where they're at. They're out there, but I don't know where they're at. And I don't know other 
more consistent conservative than a lot of the types that are now either libertarian or voluntary because they realize government is focused. They realize authority is not legitimate. At the end of the day, freedom is what matters. Freedom is what matters when I lay my head to sleep, my head to rest to sleep. Freedom is the last thing I think about. And then when I wake up when I'm actually awake for a little while, freedom is what is on my mind for the rest of that day until the next day. And so on and so forth. It has been for the last almost six years. It has been on my mind. I understand those people that have different views. I understand I'm tolerant of other views. I'm tolerant of other opinions, all views, all opinions, you know, even the nastier one. But I'm trying to figure out where the consistent type to truly advocate for smaller government, to truly advocate for tolerance of other opinions. Where are they? I'd like to see them. I'm sure they're out there, but where are they? Even true libertarians who believe in the non aggression principle can't even agree on, a, on abortion. True libertarians. You know, if I go to a libertarian page right now, type one in, and go to the hot topic of that libertarian page, I guarantee you I can find you true libertarians going back and forth, arguing against each other, and uh, they should be both on the same side even if they don't have the same uh, opinion and belief. They should both be on the side of the non-aggression principle and private property rights and free market. They should be at least be aligned with each other on those three topics. Anything else is, is perfectly okay to argue with. But um, the voluntary, the type that I am, are the most consistent and least in my humble opinion but they could you truly advocate for a voluntary and free society with consent and liberty for everyone and freedom. You know, so I understand there's conservatives out there that truly do believe in smaller government, constitutional government. There are liberals who are tolerant of other views and willing to listen and understand. But I've yet to see them in large, 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 large numbers on the internet. And I've been all over on the internet as far as the political spectrum. I've been on libertarian pages. I've been on conservative pages. I've been on anarcho-capitalist pages. I've been on you name it, page after page this side of the political spectrum, that side of the political spectrum, all over. But where are the large number of conservatives that are smaller government? No bad. I mean, large numbers, I mean more than like a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand. That's what I mean by a large number, not just like ten or a hundred or five hundred. I mean thousand and more.
Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too, Justin. Um, but what I'm saying is, I do try to listen to both both sides. But what what I don't get is that the level of Pete Collins, yet when I see videos of of so-called liberal activists in Tifa and far left. Lefty, not liberal, classic liberal, but far lefties attacking people, MAGA hat, make America great again hat, which I would never attack anyone over a hat or a shirt or whatever else they're wearing. I would either agree or disagree and then walk away. There's no reason to be aggressive because difference of opinion or because we have a disagreement. Or we meaning me and that person. We can either uh, negotiate, you know, you have your way and I have my way and we agree on one thing or more than one thing. And then we just walk away. We, we don't have to get in a fight. We don't have to assault people. We don't have to do anything. We just agree and then walk away. And that's the end of the conversation. No attacking, no violating anyone's rights, no nothing. You know, so I don't agree with liberals' uh, definition of tolerance because all the videos I've seen on the internet has exposed me to the reality that the left doesn't care about tolerance. Otherwise, videos would show me there would be tolerant of people wearing Make America Great Again hats. You know, it's not okay to assault people with a Make America Great Again hat. And it's not okay for either side, liberals or conservatives, to assault each other or one assault one and then one assault each, the other back. It's not okay for anyone to assault anyone. Only in self-defense are you allowed to use force. Otherwise, if you do uh, use force as an aggressor, even if you were in a government badge, you are the aggressor and the person, the victim that you are trying to victimize, can use self-defense and then act in, in, in a hand to the self-defense and defend themselves against aggressor, even if they were in a special costume. That does not violate the non-aggression principle, and it does not violate the philosophy of liberty, regardless of what special position, authority, or costume, or fine hat they are wearing, or whether you have a million people behind you, or one, or ten, or a thousand. It's not okay to gang up on one person and violate their rights, regardless of what voodoo garbage you are taught in school, including me. I was taught the garbage too. But I realized to come to the conclusion that I can agree and disagree with people and still be friends with them. Now, if the rude is not just, I can just block them on my personal Facebook page. But that still doesn't prevent them on their own Facebook page from babbling on about whatever. I just said, hey, I'm going to block this person because they're being, they're being obnoxious and they are being appalling and they are being uh, a, a butthole. A, a, a person who's not being nice, or at least trying to go back to the being a butthole. So people can do whatever they want on their personal page, you know, I'm not the thought police, you know, people can do whatever they want in their life. No, but I gotta call out some liberal when they're not being too liberal and when conservatives are not being too conservative. And Justin, you have every right to not agree with that wall. That's your personal belief. That is your right. No one should have to agree 
with anyone on everything. You have a right to agree or disagree with uh, with a wall or not building a wall or anything with Congress or outside of Congress or Senate or any of your so-called representatives doing that hall of corruption and play to play. So at the end of the day, when I lie my head to rest to sleep, freedom is for everyone. Transgender, gay, doesn't matter your, your sexuality, your gender, your nationality, your ethnicity. Freedom is, is valuable for everyone, and I'm willing to protect that. I don't care about fame, ego, money. That's the last thing on my mind. It's money, ego, and fame. Freedom is the first thing that's been on my mind for almost the last six years. I've been advocating for the exact same thing because I care about people's rights, because because I care about advancing humanity, human consciousness, and raising it above. That's why I do what I do. Not because I want fame, not because I want my ego inflated, not because I want all the money and all the women in the world. I can care less about any of that stuff. Freedom is the answer to everything. Freedom is the best thing that humans can have. Once they understand, don't hurt, don't steal, don't mess with people's stuff, and don't be aggressive. That includes those who work in government. Two wrongs do not make a right. If I can't rob, if I can't rape, if I can't steal, and I can't act as a mafia gang, against my local mafia or my local neighborhood. Neither does the government. If they can't do it and I can't do it, then I can't grant anyone else the right to do it for me or do it by myself. Because if it's immoral for me to do it or immoral for you to do it, it's also immoral for them to do the exact same thing. Boom. That rules out all forms of government right there. Because government is a belief in authority. It is not a belief in logic and reason. It is a belief in authority, imaginary. Yes, there's people. Yes, there's buildings. Yes, there's tanks. Yes, there's bombs. Yes, there's guns. All that is real. But authority is not inherently real. The authority is imaginary and it starts up here. You program your brain. It just isn't being programmed by yourself. It's being programmed by that, your TV. That's what Americans need to do. It start programming and thinking for themselves. I've been thinking for myself for the last six years. I've done all I can, my blood, my sweat, and my tears to try to wake people up. I've known about the Bilderberg Group and all the other stuff and the corruption for a very long time. But I don't focus on those things because I focus on freedom. Because I want everyone to have freedom, regardless of their gender, sex, nationality, race, gender, and everything else. I want them to have freedom to express themselves however they see fit, to choose their lifestyle, whatever they see fit, to eat whatever they want, to put whatever they want into their own body. Because damn it, they own their own body. The woman owns the body. The man owns the body. They own it. The government does not own it at all. No matter what they say, no matter what they write down, no matter what they register, you own your own body no matter what. If they have a higher claim over your body, that is called slavery and that is immoral. And I will always defend the individual's right to do what he or she wants, no matter what, for the rest of my life until I pass away. Because freedom is what matters. Even if we don't free it, see a free society in our lifetime, at least we're getting it started in the right direction. And we need to start healing people 
mind, heart, body, to healing souls, if you believe in those. Because we live in a broken society. You know, we have people on opiates. You know, we need marijuana. We need natural substances. We need to end the war on drugs. We need competition in the marketplace. We need more choices as far as healthier options. But we have government agents, and we have people who believe in those people, and the FDA and all the other stuff, the CDD, Center for Disease and Control, and all the other stuff that are getting in the way of the natural cures and are getting in the way of any progress being made. They were actually pushing progress back. The progress is done by people studying, educating, and informing themselves of the true knowledge and wisdom that has long been with us, but it's scattered out there in the real world and on the internet. You know. So I call things as they appear or how they are. If somebody is being a racist, I'm going to call them, not you guys, but I'm saying in general. If somebody is being a racist and they're acting like one and they're being like one, guess what? I'm going to call them one. If somebody is being a fascist and acting like a fascist and being a fascist, guess what? I'm going to call them a fascist. If somebody is believing in freedom and love liberty, guess what? I'm going to be friends with them. I'm going to have conversations with them because I love people who believe in freedom and liberty. I love people who have different opinions and disagree with me. That's fine. We can have a, we can have a discussion all day about different views and reality and different opinions. As long as we don't get in a, a, a discussion where it's name calling and me blocking you and you blocking me, as long as we believe in freedom and they live in that list, we can discuss all we want. You know, it could be me and you, me and your friend. It, it could just be perfectly happy, good going conversation. Well, um, Justin, I'm not a uh, medical health professional. But I think it has to deal with, um, you know, it could be with how certain things are ran and uh, uh, government regulations and uh, taxes and uh, all the other things that get in the way to make it more expensive, to make it more, um, make it more expensive, to make it more or make it less affordable, meaning you pay more out of your pocket. So you're getting, you're not getting the extra coverage that you want to get if the regulations, the taxes and the fees weren't in the way. You'd be spending less, keeping more money in your pocket, and you'd actually be getting better and more, more affordable, meaning more money in your pocket. Oh wait. You'd be you'd be getting more money if the regulations and all the fees and everything were in the way, and you'd have more money in your pocket to help out people who have terminal illnesses. If if the regulations everything wasn't in the way.
everything there costs more is because of government intervention in intervening into the economy. Had none of those things happened, everything would go down in price. Everything would be more affordable or, you know, as an other way I can explain it, it would be cheaper. So be, if government intervention was not to happen, everything would be cheaper and everybody, everything would be at a price to where it would send the price signal to the, to the entrepreneurs building a product to continue making cheaper prices. And then as the price went down, it would become even more cheaper so even the poorest of the poor among us can buy the product and can increase the standard of living as well. And then they can move up to the middle class. And then they can increase the standard of living again, go from the middle class to the upper middle class, and then into one percent. However, it is not okay and never okay to use government as your bully, as your, as your bully and enforcer to mold society in your own way. You have to convince people by reason, by logic, by evidence, by facts, everything not including force, mandates, or anything else. It must be changed by the way of pre, pre, no, what I want to say. You must change them by evidence, logic, fact, and everything else that excludes force from the equation. If you can convince me that government is necessary, if somebody could, if, if a conservative who believes in smaller government, limited government, could convince me that limited government is necessary and it can forever stay limited, I would change my mind. But since it hasn't been made, the argument hasn't been made, and it's not convincing, I'm not changing my mind from freedom back to limited government. It's always going to be freedom at the end of the day and at the end of the night. Voluntaryism just means living that way, doing to others as others are doing to you. When you have a marketplace, in the marketplace, which conservatives understand more, more, far more than liberal. They believe in free market. But when it comes to voting and everything else, they don't believe in free market. They believe in Keynesianism, central banking, government intervention in the economy, bailouts, liberals do too, both sides do. When it comes to war, both conservatives are united. When it comes to deficits, both sides are united, liberals and conservatives, Republicans and Democrats. Federal Reserve, both sides are committed to the Federal Reserve, Democrats and Republicans. Raising the debt ceiling, both Republicans and conservatives are united among the four large issues. Only a few in Congress and the Senate even take a stand. The William Paul the DeVore, the Ron Paul, the Thomas Matthews, the Walter Jones, who once voted for the Iraq War and then changed his mind and was pro-peace anti-war. He changed his mind in a pro-military gesture. W-A-L-T-E-R-J-O-N-E-S. He is a he, he just died like last week, Walter Jones. He was a terrific guy. So on debt ceiling, the Federal Reserve, bailout, debt, central banking, wars, intervention into uh, economy, regime change, the CIA, the FBI, all that stuff, Republicans and Democrats are not different. They are the exact same. And as long as people continue to believe team A is better than team B, and then electing team A and bitching, well, 
from B side, electing B side, arguing and complaining that team A did this and team B did that to team A and the team A did that to team B. As long as they argue back and forth, they're not even going to be free up here inside their own head. They're going to be free only when they leave the superstition of the God called government, which is what atheists believe. They don't believe in the Christian God, but they do believe in the God called government, which is that, that's exactly what statism is. It's the God called government. Statism is the irrational belief that politicians know how to run their life better than you do. It is the most insane, irrational belief ever. But yet, data continues to advocate and even encourage others to believe in it without even second guessing or questioning it without any sort of hint of acknowledging common sense acknowledging that putting people into power will always corrupt, you know, the Lord of the Ring, the, the Ring of Power. So as long as conservatives and liberals agree upon the larger Jews, and there's only a small faction of conservatives being consistent and liberals being consistent and libertarians getting nowhere by the freedom and liberty movement grows, then all those libertarians will be not libertarians anymore. They will be voluntary because they'll, they'll see that the libertarian party and the libertarian method is great. It is great. Individual libertarians are not all of them. They are wonderful, great people. But the libertarian party is an absolute mess, an absolute mess. I don't care what individual libertarians believe in, eat, drink, through whatever individuals regard it, no matter what. I just want people to be consistent and I want conservatives to be more consistent and if they're willing to put their ideas out there, I want them to be consistent and advocate for the same thing and same thing with liberals. I've done this for almost the last six years. I've been nothing but consistent myself. I'm not saying I'm perfect, and I'm a know-it-all, because I'm not perfect, and I'm not a know-it-all. But I can argue with the best of them. I'm not saying I'm better than everyone. I'm just saying I can put up my 29-year-old knowledge with anyone on the political spectrum. Progressive, communist, liberal, conservative, I can argue with the best of those types. Doesn't mean I'm always going to win. Doesn't mean I'm always going to have the best argument. Doesn't always mean I'm going to have confidence that I'm going to win the argument. But I will always argue for freedom. I will always argue for voluntarism. If we're having a, if, if I'm in a comment section with a conservative, and we have a hundred comments back and forth, 99% of those comments is going to be freedom. Or me asking them, what is your definition of freedom? What is your definition of government? And if they can't explain it to me, then I'll just tell them they don't believe in freedom. If they can give me a definition of what freedom is, sure, they have a right to their opinion. They have every right to their opinion. And I would respect it. But I want them to be consistent. It's not about disagreeing or agreeing with them. It's about them being consistent and advocating a consistent message. That is what I'm trying to stress here. I'm not trying to stress that they can't have their own opinion and they're not allowed to express it. I'm just arguing that I want them to be more consistent and I want them to be more consistent, controlled, and liberal. They can do whatever they want in their life, you know, and uh, they can believe in whatever. And I just want more consistent types of libertarians. You know, I know a lot of consistent libertarians. I know a lot of consistent conservatives. You know, like Rand Paul, not purpose. Ron Paul and others. 
but I want there to be more out there. There's got to be more out there. Where are they? Are they not willing for office? Are they on the internet? Are they in the real world? Do I not know them? What? Consistency is what I obsess about because it it is it gives my brain um, intellectual stimulation. I I think about concepts and ideas when I'm out eating, drinking water, going to the bathroom, or showering, or sleeping. I'm 99.9999 percent thinking about ideas, concepts, and uh, ideas. So I never run out of ideas or things to talk about. And I never run out of new arguments and new ideas that looking at things. You know, I may change my mind on uh, different things like science, you know, but never will I ever change my mind on freedom. I don't care, I said it earlier, fame, women, money, ego, cars, sex, whatever. That is not what I'm after. Sure, there may be a bonus, but freedom is what I'm after. And freedom is what I want to give to people. Say, here, you want freedom? I'm giving you the opportunity to start believing in it. I'm giving you the opportunity to start reading about it. I'm giving you the opportunity to start correcting your inconsistencies and correcting your errors of your way. Maybe you're misled by somebody and I can give you the right information and the right ideas. And I can throw people on the right path and plant a seed. But the rest of it is on them. The rest of it is on them. But I can give you plenty of people that started me on the path. Judge Andy Napolitano, Peter Schiff, Ron Paul, Tom Woods, big influence on me. Lysanne Spooner, No Trade in Constitution and No Authority, Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard. That was a huge, huge, huge influence on my thinking from a libertarian to an anarchist. In one month, in one month, I went from libertarian to anarchist, just in one month time. And um, who else? Lock and Roll was a huge influence. Um, I me mean going from truly consistently advocating for freedom and finally giving up authority. So anyways, I know I babbled on forever, but I want to thank you all. I really appreciate all of you guys for stopping by. Justin, I want to say thank you for giving your opinion, buddy. I really appreciate it. You're always welcome here. Everyone else, you're always welcome to give your opinion even if you disagree even if you fundamentally completely oppose some of my ideas or some of the things I talk about or some of the things I do in these live stream, Don't feel shy to not share your opinion. Everyone has the right to the freedom of speech and the, the right to express themselves however they see fit. I just, I'm just asking for more consistent conservatives and liberals. That's all. I don't care that, that they have different opinions or anything else, or how they live. I just want more consistent people, you know. It's rarely to find a conservative who truly believes in smaller government and states it in writing and in legislation. But they are out there. The second way of for a libertarian to actually truly believe in the non aggression principle and not fumble all over themselves and go from this message to that message, you know, or go from Gary Johnson to Donald Trump, or go from uh, whatever else, you know, go from Ron Paul to Donald Trump, you know, freedom and liberty, and uh, the free market to uh, big government, nanny state, police state garbage, you know. I'm, I'm just using comparison because I've actually seen former Ron Paul supporters and former people who believe in freedom and liberty and free markets actually go to people like Donald Trump because they got scared of some real imagined boogeyman. 
So again, I'll voluntarism is just the reality that you live your life the way you see fit. I live my life the way you see fit. And yes, libertarians who truly believe in libertarian don't care if you're conservative or liberal as long as you're not forcing your way of life upon the people. The basis of libertarianism, the first thing that libertarians understand and begin when they're studying the beginning of libertarianism, which I understood almost six years ago, is the non-aggressing principle. It means you don't aggress. You don't become the aggressor. Non-aggression principle does not mean you are a part of it. Self-defense is not in violation of libertarian and non-aggression principle. It is a violation of the non-aggression principle and volunteerism to be the aggressor, no matter what fine hat you wear, no matter what costume you wear, no matter what what suit you you are wearing, if you are being the aggressor. Somebody has the right to defend themselves and shoot you if you are a threat to them. That includes civilian to cop. If the cop is being the aggressor, the civilian has every right to defend themselves. If the cop is being the aggressor. It doesn't change just because you wear a badge. You know, they're not granted extra rights just because they have a badge. It's like I'm not granted extra rights just because I'm disabled, you know. I want to be treated the same way as everyone else is being treated. I want to be treated no different because I have a disability. I have a disability because I was born that way. And I don't want to be treated any different or looked upon any, like a subhuman or some way, shape, shame because of my disability. I believe in freedom for the last six years and I'm going to continue advocating for freedom. So anyways everyone, thank you all for staying here for almost 50 minutes. Um, I know I babbled on for too long. But please continue to come here. There's a lot more to come of live streams. I really appreciate all of you watching, and I really appreciate all of you watching, sharing everything out. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you, Justin, for sharing your opinion, buddy. Really appreciate it. You're welcome to come back here at any time. You're welcome to share any of your opinions, even if they don't align with mine 100%. Again, you you're, you have every right to your opinion, and share it as you keep it. Anyways, I'm out of here. Peace, everyone. Freedom, love, and uh, everything else. No aggression necessary. Freedom is the answer to everything. Peace out.